Is that your name, gangster? DJ Imperial D. It's happening. Dallas, Texas. Bobby Sessions. Young legend. You know where we at with it. Toronto. Hey. About to go up. Day two. You know what I'm saying, man? What's happening, though? Hey. <laughs> hey you got the lights going on in the back? Oh, hey. Talk to me right here. State your name, gangster. What's happening, man? Grip. Straight out of motherfucking Atlanta. On the motherfucking Moore. Black superheroes tour. My nigga Tig in this bitch. What up, dog? Yeah. Where you from, T? Atlanta. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Atlanta. Where you from, man? Where you from? I'm originally from Montreal, but you can call me a, a Torontonian. You know Torontonian. Nah, beautiful city. Beautiful city. Thank you for having us. You know, sure. Thank you for, 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 for coming through, man. Sure. Uh, and I like to see the, the, the different states connecting Dallas yeah, and, and, and or, or, or Texas and, sure. and Georgia and everything. Yeah, sure. It's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Mic check. One, two, one, two. We in the mic check. State your name, gangsta. Bobby Sessions, young legend from Dallas, Texas, man. I hit finna kill this Toronto show. More black superheroes tour. You know the time it is, man. Hey, uh, yeah. Jeez. We got the man of the hour. Mm -hmm. State your name, gangster. Amar. Yeah, yeah. And how's everybody doing today? Are you guys ready for a movie? Bow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Amar, and today we have the pleasure of interviewing the real Dapper from the home of my favorite football team, the Philadelphia Eagles. Not only is Dapper dropping more bars than Fort Knox on his latest album, Thanks for Nothing 2, but he is a multifaceted entrepreneur with businesses ranging from daycares to gas stations and a healthy stock and real estate portfolio. Now, the man of the hour who not only outsmart, but outworks the next man, the real Dapper. How you doing? Dang, you been doing your homework, bro. That's crazy. Like, uh, sure. that's a blast shit right there. <laughs> you know a little bit about everything. I'm great, bro. I'm in golden space right now. Honored to be here. First time in Toronto? Nah, this is my second time. I had a show here back in like April. Me and Conway the Machine was out here. I was on tour with him. We did a Canadian league. So that's like my, probably like my third time in my life out here though. Okay, well I hope uh, one of your connects took you to get some jerk chicken and oxtail gravy while you're here. Just had some. I, just, I don't eat chicken, but we just had, um, we went to Chubby's across the street. Okay, I love dope. Chubby's, yeah. So, so my vegan third time. or? Uh, pescatarian. Okay, yeah. dope. Good for you, man. For sure. Staying healthy. Got to. Let's, let's jump right in it, man. Let's um, do it. In terms of the music, now you're on the second leg of uh, your More Black Superheroes tour. That'll be going on for the next month across all major markets across North America. Which city you're looking forward to performing in the most besides Philly? Mm -hmm. And do you own any real estate in any of these cities? Yeah, so our first show was in Detroit. Uh, I own a couple properties in Detroit. So outside of Philly, that's the only other place I have real estate. But um, I'm actually really excited for Toronto, uh, Canada. When we was here the first time, it was lit. So I know tonight going to be special. And I'm looking forward to like the Texas, the Texas area. Uh, I did a show in Austin uh, last year around this time and it was bananas. So I'm looking forward to hitting like Dallas, Houston and Austin again. So that's going to be lit. Phenomenal real estate opportunities out there too. And yeah, I've been hearing, low yeah. taxes. Yeah, I've been hearing. There, <laughs> Arizona, all those spots. Yeah. So how is it touring with Westside Boogie and the other black superheroes? <laughs> uh, they're all dope, man. It's a great collective of guys. Boogie's a great person. I'm honored that he even gave me an opportunity to open up on this tour with him. Uh, we also got music together. He's on the album. I know you know that. You know a little bit of everything. Yeah, he body bagged that. Uh, yeah, he fired, bro. So a lot of these guys are extremely talented and just great people. So that's a plus. I'm honored to be a part of this uh, tour with these guys. That's phenomenal. For sure. More tours coming up and uh so you said you came here in april mm -hmm. how did you find the energy of the city of toronto because recently we had some american artists come out to rolling loud and they said we weren't turned enough for them for real yeah so how do you feel about our toronto yeah, audience man. uh i love toronto they was turned for me so whatever whatever they was doing it just wasn't working for them you know what i'm saying uh i don't been to some stale crowds before and toronto wasn't one of them like Toronto wasn't, London, Ontario wasn't, uh, Montreal was lit. Like 
Yeah, I wasn't giving me the energy, that's for sure. That's phenomenal, because you're coming <laughs> with that bars, man. Oh, absolutely. People, people that are coming out to the Black Superhero Show, they're really loving the craft of hip-hop, mm-hmm. and you guys are bringing that back bit by bit. Exactly, yep. I feel like this is like a hip-hop market. Like, you know, you guys like you guys have the Drakes and the Tories and the Weekends, so you guys love Melodic also, but I think there's a huge um, ear here for, like, the spitters, the lyricists, you know? Yeah, we do. Uh, bars is making a resurgence in hip hop mm-hmm. right now. It's not for everybody, but for the people that do like the art of music and the art of hip hop, you guys have done a phenomenal job. Yeah. Now, your album has been on repeat since I got word that I was going to have the pleasure of interviewing you. Yeah. Thanks for nothing, too. Like, honestly, man, what a complete album from the skits to the intros, the way that you broke the album down with the. I'm not going to say hardcore gangster tracks, Mm -hmm. but it's like that smooth, I made it, I'm doing it, and you got tracks for the girls. Now, what was your favorite track on the album? My favorite? uh, Probably um, probably that much. That's probably one of my favorite, because that's my favorite one to perform for sure. That's actually, that's track number four. Uh Bro, (laughs) I was listening to it, and... The way the beat is and the way you sound on it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, are you familiar with Belly? Yeah, for Canadian sure. artist. For sure. He's one of my favorite artists. Uh-huh. And I was just like, man, he would destroy this beat. Dang. Like for, to catch you and like, this is just maybe putting it out I there. Gotta tap me but, in with Belly. But you and Belly on a track Let's would be it. murder because yo, the I think you would elevate his pen game and he would elevate your pen mm-hmm. game. You know you. It's just uh, the sense of friendly competition would For be sure. amazing. But all the guys that like I do, um, that like I get features from, they always come with it. Like I be getting phenomenal features because they, I put my guys on phenomenal records where they're like, yo, I got to come with it. That, that give me a fire bars. You know what I mean? So I love like getting features on like my spinach, you know, the People ones that I'm People do gonna expect learn. to get stunted on when they're doing a collab. Mm-hmm. But when you know somebody's bringing that fire, that yeah, guy might drop it. that he might drop an 11 or a 12 you show yeah. up with a solid 10 piece yeah. you can work with that <laughs> straight up now the signing to griselda records how did that happen no I, i'm not signed to griselda okay, i'm under I'm um i'm under, well benny is under griselda but i'm under benny's label which is black soprano family okay I got thank you management. for clarifying yep, that for, for sure no problem at all so how did that end up happening how did you end up signing to bsf uh, Shout out to our sponsors, Astro Pink, always coming with that loud, loud. Check them out on their website, myastropink.com, or you can hit them up on Instagram at Astro underscore Pink. If you know, you know. Um, Being on tour with Benny, um, we, uh, I I got a feature from Benny, then I ended up going on tour with Benny, and after the tour, like the reception from the audience was so dope. That, you know, like most of his A&Rs and managers just started tapping in. Like, yo, dad, what's up? You got a situation? You know, they're asking me questions and whatnot. And I'm like, yo, I want to rock with y'all too. You know what I mean? So it's like a mutual thing. And uh, so shout out to Ox, shout out to Jake, just guys that, you know, I built with during the tour and just constantly like just came and performed properly. And afterwards we locked in that management situation. So it was like a management partnership situation. You know, I'm not signed directly to the label, okay. but they managed me. You know what I mean? That's kinda, amazing. Kind of like how Benny's situation is with Rock Nation where he's, not under their label, but has their management. Okay. I've got the same situation as That's that. a phenomenal tree to be Absolutely. a part of, Absolutely. very honestly. And I'm, I'm highly grateful for it. Bro's doing his thing, one of the top lyricists in the game right now. So for sure. Yeah, I'm honored to be a part of that, for sure. So working with Benny has been a pleasure through and through. Yeah, great dude. Selfies Stamped. in the race. <laughs> Man, that track is eating up the charts since May. Absolutely, yes, sir. And I watched the video. And it's just, it's just so funny because you can actually visually picture it. Yeah. That somebody you pick it up a shorty and she just taking selfies doing and doing all sorts of stuff. Doing you know, too much. long you as know she don't drop look. the location, everything <laughs> oh, is man. kosher. Right, right, right. But you know how it go. Look, that's the, that's for the players only, right there. People even like, yo, you getting on my nerves, baby girl. Like, tone it down a notch, you know. So I know you know. Uh, so question, yes, who are your musical inspirations? Because me personally, when I was listening to the album, you got so much of that East Coast swag because you're mm-hmm. from Philly. It's like, mm-hmm. there's a little bit of New York in there. There's a little bit of this in there. It's like, who, who do you really draw from? Uh, so like, like right now is, uh, I'm really just like into myself and like my own like lane. But like early on, like I was listening to a lot of influence from Eminem. Okay. Uh, Big Sean. Like you can't really hear them in my sound now. Yeah. Like early on, I was like animated and you know played around like like different kind of rap styles. So like I liked Eminem, Big Sean, 
Um, and then like Drake, J. Cole, like those are all, all guys that I like grew up like really like studying and liking their stuff. And um, that was like like the influence. Um, but as of now, I get like the fabulous comparisons, like just like dress and okay. fly, swaggy, calm, but still like you could tell, you know, lean I'm cut back from that meter. cloth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you know what's sure. going on. Like if you listening to the music, you like, yo, I can hear that shit up. You know, they know what's going on, you know? Okay. Sure. I'm gonna jump over from music to a little bit of the family situation. Mm-hmm. So on the on the records, you mentioned you have a, a girl and a daughter, right? Mm-hmm, for sure. And how old's your daughter? My daughter's two. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah. you're new to the game. Absolutely. My daughter I'm, just turned I'm seven. New to it all, man. Okay. How are the sleepless nights? You know it's crazy. My daughter been sleeping like through the night since she was born. Like she, I don't had no issues like with her waking up. You know, every once in a while, you know, she'll bust the groove. You know, do some cock block and shit, but. Overall, she be chilling. She that's sleep. Okay. She sleep real well. Yeah, <laughs> that's dope. Yeah. So, how is it being a dad and a role model? Uh, it's awesome. It's actually uh, keep me like real, like well grounded. So, I just know that she look at every single thing I do, every single thing. And you know, if I'm on a laptop, she pull over her little pink laptop, little toy laptop, and get the typing on it. You know what I mean? If I'm dancing a certain way, she gonna get her little arm up and dance the same way. So I just, um, I take a lot of respect respect to that. You know what I mean? I respect my daughter. I respect my fiance. Like I respect my household. So, you know, everything I do, I just think about them now. So, you know, congratulations on the engagement. That's amazing, man. You You know what? We need Mm -hmm. more men to be grown men. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's a difference between Mm -hmm. a father and a dad. Mm -hmm. And you're definitely playing the part of a dad. Absolutely. Half the letters, twice the weight. That's a and so you grew up in Philly? Yes, sir. Uh, Joe, what part yeah. of Philly? I'm from North Philly. This area is a area called Strawberry Mansion. So that's like the top of North Philly. Okay. And how is it growing up in North Philly? North rough. It's always been rough. The uh, whole upcoming up, upbringing was rough, like in, from that environment. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, seen a lot of murders, seen a lot of drugs, a lot of shootouts, all type of shit like that. You know, dibble the dabble, you know, myself and a bunch of little dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? So it was easy to get sucked in. But, you know. Fortunately for me, you know, I had some some good people in my corner. You know, I had a mom who really, really cared, a dad who invested in my education. Amazing. Yeah, so I was able to, um, like, surpass all of that, all the negative influences. I was, you know, just been strong-minded. So I was able to go to college and, you know, do my thing, go my own route, you know what I mean? So That's so dope. What did you take in college? I started off as an accounting major. Okay. And then when I started pursuing the music and just kind of, like, being on some, like, not really caring about it as much. I switched it over to uh, was it a business administration or something oh, like that. So yeah. you got a well-rounded background. Yeah, yeah. Your I got finances. my degree in all that. Yeah, I got my Congratulations, degree in business administration. Man. Yeah. So see, you can you don't have to just focus on rap, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta focus on multiple things. Mm-hmm. Having that education is clutch because becoming a successful rapper is not for everybody. There's only like three percent of the population that makes mm-hmm. it. For sure. Right. Yep. And then that's like, you know, rap is a commercial for everything else I'm doing. You know, the, the rap is how I get my popularity and, you know, I love it. You know what I mean? So it's not even about the, the money or anything like that, but the rap is just the influence with the rap and everything else. You know, I make money from everything else I'm doing, you know, so. Sure. So now speaking of rap, opening up other doors, I see that you opened up a door in a local TV show called mm. Old Heads. <laughs> and I noticed, I noticed the two things in that episode. The first thing that I noticed is uh, Philadelphia is a lot like Toronto and other major cities in the States. You guys are experiencing a lot of gentrification in Philly. Right now, so right. how is the gentrification affecting the neighborhood and how is it affecting mm. your businesses? All right. On the real estate side, the gentrification is supportive and helpful. Um, but I, I don't feel like the city's really feeling it. I feel like the crime's like still through the roof. So I don't know if there's been a pause or a hold on certain gentrification or if that's the reason, part of the reason for, you know, the increase in the crime in Philly. Like, you know, our murder rates like through the roof right now. So um, I don't know. Everywhere in yeah. North America. It's, yeah, every, every all-time like numbers. Every, everything's an all-time numbers for sure. And, um, you know, Philly's on fire. LA's on fire. Toronto's on fire. Like, this, uh, yeah. it's wild out here right now. This is, like, just overall just a rough time. Like, this, like even without the gentrification or anything like that, I just think everything that's going on in the world is just causing change and, like, negative influence for real, for real. During desperate times, people make extreme moves, right? Exactly that, yep. And the second thing that I noticed is your corrector on Old Head LA 
who was searching for his father's killer, right? Mm-hmm. I would love to find out who the father's killer is. But how do you feel about the lack of male role models in our disenfranchised communities? Damn, bro, and and it's it not just a Philadelphia problem. Yeah. It's a Toronto problem. Mm-hmm. It's a New York. Mm-hmm. It's a Paris problem. Mm-hmm. Because they got these disenfranchised metro housing ghettos spread out throughout the world. And they might be talking with a different language, but they're still throwing up the same sets. They're in the same mindset of the drugs, guns. So how do you feel that having a positive male influence in your life affected you and how having a lack of a male role model affects others? Damn, bro, you, you on your joint, bro. That's crazy like that. You even like watched O'Head and knew that that was the message that, you know, that we were trying to get across with that. So that's extremely dope of you. And um, I'm honored and grateful of your research, bro. So um, <clears throat> I think it's like such a major key thing. So that's actually why I got into the daycare business is so that, you know, like little black boys in Philly can see that a black man can be doing something successful with their time and, and teaching and educating and being the owner, you know what I mean? Of, of something you too can grow up and be the owner of this and that. So like, through like, you know, my daycare called Young With Options Academic Center. Young With Options is just my overall brand. Yeah. But um, through that, I try to like offer just different stuff. So I have like my homies who are chefs, firefighters, um, producers, uh, photographers, videographers come in and just operate, you know, whatever their craft is with the kids. You know, my chef homie come in and show them how to cook. My barber homie show them how to do haircuts. You know what I mean? And it's like, even though they're so young, but it's just such like a, a good space to be in like that's three and four year olds like they remember that and they see stuff and they're, like, and they're like like you don't know what you want until you're exposed to it you know what i mean so or unless you see somebody else got it or whatever the case is so i just want to be that positive role model that i may not have had and just you know hopefully i if i can't change everybody's lives but if i could change one you know that'd be worth the while one life is one life change is yeah. so rewarding honestly sure. what you just described sounds a lot like uh the spot we run out here in clubhouse mm. we have a multifaceted business where we just try to bring people in and they can all network mm. co-op networking but i might have to steal a page yeah, from your book sure, and bro. really reach out to the kids because i was thinking of reaching out to the to the teenagers mm-hmm. but you're going out there and grabbing them younger yeah so, so you're probably going to lead to a higher success rate of planting that seed young and watching so, it grow bro. i hope so but that's dope man shout out the clubhouse man thank that, you that's fire like we on we on the same wavelength bro now i love how on the album throughout the album thanks for nothing too you keep force feeding people free game mm-hmm. but how having multiple business and being an outside of the box thinker like yourself, what pushed you into entrepreneurship and did you have a mentor along the way? I did. My mentor is actually a female, uh, her name is Monaquetta. And um, she just like, I just kind of just watched the stuff that she was doing. She incorporated me in some of her businesses and you know, like I was running the streets and all that and getting a little bag in the streets. And you know, I was just looking for just ways to, you know, help out or invest or whatever I could do to, you know, try to make a little slight transition. And, you know, I, um, her mentorship, you know, allowed for me to learn, you know, I'm always been smart. Like I said, I was running the streets and still was a full-time student at Temple. You know what I'm saying? I still was running around, you know what I mean? But just dumb shit like that. You know what I mean? But can I be very honest with you? It's not dumb shit. It's very few individuals like yourself that think outside the box Mm -hmm. to be in the streets and to be in school. I I pursued a similar avenue because Mm -hmm. if one door closes, you got to make sure that you have another one open. Now, you already touched lightly on the daycares, Mm -hmm. but how is it to become the youngest black daycare owner in Philadelphia? That that was dope. It's crazy. I didn't really like know it or like care for it or like Feel anything from it's it. It's a the phenomenal recognition yeah. because, like you said, boys need to see men doing positive mm-hmm. things in our communities, for and sure. most of the men they're busy being boys, right? For sure. And then, like, like that age that I'm at, where it's like, like just enough influence, but not like just the old dude who's out of touch. That, like, you know, the young boys, like 16, 15, like they still relate to me. Like they look like, no, he cool as shit. You know what I mean? I'm not old as fuck. I'm not young <laughs> as fuck. I'm just at a perfect age where I could talk to you and get across to you. You know what I'm saying? And that's why, like, the youngins listen to me. You know, they listen to my music. They fuck with me. And it's like, we locked in. So, yeah. Are I, you, I are you looking key. to take the daycare business outside of Philadelphia? Ooh. Ooh. 
Oh man, let me make sure you my phone ain't tapped, man. What you got going on over there? <laughs> yeah. If your company goes yep. public, let me know. Yeah. I want to get in before man, the IPO. Love, bro. That's crazy. So we we it's funny because we actually, you know, um shopping around some like investment opportunities, but we are opening up one in Los Angeles next. Good for yeah. you, man. Congratulations. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Thank you. You know what? Yeah. I'm a firm believer what you put out in life, you get back Absolutely. and you're taking care of your community and the community will take care of you tenfold. 100%. That's why I like, like even when like stuff like don't like every time like something just go left or slightly negative for me, it's always pulled back up in a positive way. And I know that's just because of like how much positive I put out. You know what I mean? It ain't yeah. too much negative that can happen to a person like me because sure. of how much positive energy I distribute to life. You know what I mean? So that's dope. Sure. And so you got daycares mm-hmm. and now gas stations also. Yeah, so that's like a um, that's a collective of us. It's, I'm part of this organization called the Yacht Club. Okay. And it's about like twenty of us, and um, we just kind of just like put like money into the pot. Like I might not got a million, but if I got ten thousand and you and your squad got ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand, that should add up to whatever number we trying to go. So we kind of taking like a power and like power and numbers type of effect. And we was able to acquire a gas station and we um, like put our money together. And that's how we got like the uh, real estate in Detroit. So I got partners with that. You know what I mean? So it's uh, dope. Like we just move in as a group and we was able to do something like that. So, you know, I was coming at me like, oh, you got gas station. You were a billion. I ain't on but, that. But. No, but that's phenomenal. Yeah. And I hope that our audience was listening to that part. Mm-hmm. You don't got to have your own million dollars. If you got friends, you got family, pool your money together. Mm -hmm. You have to have an exit plan. And if you don't know what an exit plan is, look it up when it comes to business and it'll help you in life. I promise you. And also, I want to congratulate you one more time. You've actually spun your hip hop into a TV show, now into a movie. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's fire. Yep. Um, So I got uh, two movie roles that one I just finished up and one that I'm... um, going into production with at like the top of the year. So the one that we just wrapped up is called Old Head. So Old Head, okay. the short series that we were part of, the director was able to get a budget, you know, just something. Once again, just another dude who grinded his way up and, you know, they trusted him with a big budget and we got a movie done out of it. I'm still the main character. So shout out to Tony Chenault for that. Nope. And um, allowing me to, you know, he got the big bag or whatever he did, you know, got the movie situation and he kept me as the lead actor. And um, that was dope. And, you know, I've been, I take acting classes. Like, I, I do the acting full time okay. as well. So, you know, that's my shit. That's and, um, good for you, man. That acting bag bigger about. than that hip hop bag, from what it I'm is, hearing. It is, it is. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the movie, or is that like under wraps for um, now? It's pretty much, it, they did a great job at, um, like, I could tell you watch Old Head. So, like, Old Head from is season one through, I believe, I think we got three seasons out. So, they, they did a good job at kind of like capping off. The series, like kind of mm-hmm. like a series finale, but also giving it its own like beginning, middle, and end. So it sits as a movie of its own. So okay. you don't necessarily have to go watch the series to in order feel to know what's the going movie. On. But, I, well, I need to know who yeah, killed your dad. So that, that's, in the, revealed, in the show. that's revealed in the movie. So I got to figure that out. Uh-huh, that's revealed in the movie. So, you know, of course, I can't tell you, you know, them NDAs uh-huh. get signed, but that's revealed in the movie. Okay. And um, so it, it, they did a great job of giving it as beginning, middle, and end. But also, if you did watch and as a fan of the actual web series itself, you can see the whole, like, the, the, the cap on it. You know what I mean? That's, that's amazing that you got so many things going on. Do you have anything else going on that we don't know about that you can reveal without an NDA? Oh, man. You, been, I don't, you might got my notes in your phone or something, bro. I might be <laughs> accidentally sharing, bro, my notes. Like, you just hit a lot. Um, nah, bro. I'm, uh, my main focus is on this tour right now. And um, I got two albums in the tuck right now. I just finished up two albums right before the tour. They fire. I bet they um, are. Um, so been getting a lot of interest from, you know, different places. So, you know, that's pretty much it now. Just new music on the way. That movie going to drop at the top of the year. Um, working on that daycare. And um, oh, I, got, I got the brand new uh, alcohol. Shout out to Prebu Cognac. So you got a, my, alcohol. Part, my partner that you've been in touch with, Easy. Okay. So uh, Easy and I, we got the, we got the uh, Prebu Cognac. So no. we excited about that. I feel that. like I, I fumbled, man. I, no, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't catch it online, Listen, that's man. crazy because you've been on it. I'm like, ooh. So you almost, you almost like, lost me with that. But we uh, got the cognac that we just launched. Uh, oh. Shout out to Easy, my partner. And um, I like cognac crazy myself, with that. So. Yeah, so you know, that just go, go along with everything that's else. It's organic. It's a, uh, don't get a hangover from it. It's organic. 
It's uh, clean and it's cool, man. It's like a nice little <laughs> sip. Tastes good. Throwing, I love that, it. throwing the word organic in there seems like it's going to increase that profit margin, though. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Whatever that takes. <laughs> but it's real good. We getting investment opportunities with that and all. Like just, just doing our thing, bro. You know, just trying to kick their ass all across the board. That's all. Uh, That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Now we are going to wrap up the interview. Mm-hmm. So this is actually my first time ever doing a live interview. So I did bring something for you. So I was listening to your album and me, I've always, the way I listen to hip hop is like, where is this individual's inspiration coming from the beats and this and that. And so just the way you were speaking about business and motivating the way that I felt you're just uplifting yeah. someone who's tapped into the lyrics and not just the beat. Mm-hmm. You actually really reminded me of this individual. Just give me one second. I didn't know. Gotta be big, bro. Gotta be uncle. Bro, is this a vinyl? It's a vinyl. The uncle nip. Well, we're gonna have to find out. Damn, bro. This is special right here, man. He, I, I, I felt on, Nipsey bro. really paved the way. So look at that, bro. Okay, you got the victory Come tattoo. On, man. Amazing. That's my my idol, bro. I got a big ass portrait of Nipsey in my wall and all really? that. So this is that's where it come from, bro. You, you know what wow, you that's, that's crazy, bro. Dude, that's, random, that's crazy, you bro. Work out what the yo, I'm, either, yo, either I was I'm gonna show up with a reasonable bro. doubt or damn, this. Bro. That's crazy, bro. I'm an honor and I'm like, damn. No problem, man. That's crazy. He tried to get a real nigga choked up on camera. He tried to get a real nigga choked up on camera. I told you. This is real, fire, bro. real, man. Yeah, I'm not just some dude with a, with a mic, man. Like, Damn, bro. This mean the world to me, bro. I swear, Thank bro. You, man. Highly grateful, man. Thank you, got Uncle Nip on here. Yeah, man. Thank you, bro. I got gifts for you, too, bro. I got gifts for you, too, bro. Thank you so much, man. Damn, love. Congratulations. Thank you, bro. Thank you for tuning in to the first ever interview with Amar on the We Love Hip Hop Network. Have a great day. Yeah.